This video will demonstrate a remote rig setup using a Raspberry Pi interface with an Elecraft K3S. We have this uh, remote uh, real VNC viewer set up already. I'm on a Linux laptop running Mint 17.3 and I'm remoting into the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi has a USB cable going to the back of the K3S. We're going to use the K3S sound card and the serial USB uh, setup back there to control the rig's frequency and a few other controls. To send audio back and forth from the from the uh, Raspberry Pi to the laptop, we're using Zeta NJ Bridge again, as in a previous video. So we already have Zeta set up. We have the J2N and the N2J. So they're coming in and they're going out. So the system is the K3S uh, USB sound card coming into the Raspberry Pi going out to Zeta over to this laptop. From the laptop, we go to the Raspberry Pi through the N2J here on the Raspberry uh, setup. And it is sent over. The We're doing uh, two-channel audio. My voice is on the first channel. And a tone is on the second channel to activate the push to talk. So we do not have this set up as Vox. So we're using push to talk. So we hit the push to talk first, hold on to it a little bit. After we're done speaking, then it lets go. And then we go back to receive. We're actually hooked up to it right now. And what you're hearing is my voice coming back from the K3S audio monitor of my voice. So it may sound just a little bit different than it normally would without going through all this software and through the K3S and its own monitor, audio amp, and all that stuff. So Zeta's coming in on the first channel, and it's going to this other system. That is the, um, the input, USB sound card input, the line input to the K3. So once the push to talk is activated, it will send out any audio that I, you know, that I'm sending over to it. And there's a little bit of a timing setup, but this is all software, a little bit of a learning curve, and it's all free software. So it's kind of a fun experimenting with this. We have G Rig here, and I'm just on uh, 160 meters, and it's the output is hooked up to a 50 ohm. And we just have this so we could hear the background static. Over on this uh, jack connection again in the setup, we're using a lot less latency because we're not using the Raspberry Pi's own sound card as the jack sound card. We're using that USB sound card from the K3S and it will allow a lot lower latency setting. So we have both the input and the output is the K3S USB sound card. And it shows up as this USB audio codec in both cases. So just look for that and select those two. And you can see the latency down here is 8 milliseconds. And I'm running 3 to be a little bit conservative. I might be able to use 2. But I figured this is good enough for now. The ALSA command to get the Raspberry Pi's own sound card so that we send a tone from the laptop to activate the push to talk first it holds on to it a little bit after I'm done speaking, as you can hear. And we have a gate set up so it, that tone does not go out through the gate until I talk. And I'll show you that setup. But the ALSA command is ALSA out. 
dash D hardware zero using three periods just like the jack setting over here using the lowest quality because we don't need high quality audio going to an audio derives uh, push to talk keen circuit so all it's doing is taking that tone rectifying it charging it up in a capacitor that's hooked up to the base of a transistor the collector of the transistor is going to the hot lead for the push to talk jack and it just grounds it and activates the push to talk and the timing of the push to talk is done on done in software over here on the laptop so as you see on the pi here the uh, cpu is very modest it's staying very low and we look down here in the x run the x run count and it's just one or two or three so that's very reasonable everything seems to be working very well this has already been on a couple hours already as I was trying to get this prepared for the setup. So to review once again, the system on QJAC CTL is the K3S sound card, the input and the K3 output. The Zeta is the streaming app that works. It was designed to work over the local area network. You could use Jack Trip if you want to go outside you know your LAN and if you're out there on the internet anywhere in the world you, you could uh, log into here with uh, Jack Trip. Zeta the guy that designed Zeta says you might be able to do it you know if you do the port forwarding but it was not designed that way and then again we we want to use the Pi his own sound card so we can activate that push to so the talk switch before we send our voice Let's go back to the laptop and I'll show you that setup. So we have Zeta from the Raspberry Pi streaming over the LAN and it's coming into just a little bit of an equalizer going to my sound card so I can hear it and to the screen recorder so you can hear it. My microphone is going into a VST host with a few VST plugins my voice is delayed slightly through this delay line li uh, linear interpolation until the gate fully activates so it, for me it's about 40 milliseconds so it takes a little bit of getting used to if you want to monitor your voice from the k3s monitor which is what you're hearing my voice that you're hearing right now is from the monitor amplifier inside the k3 it's sending it through Zeta through this equalizer and over to the screen recorder. So there's just a little bit of delay, but it's not bad. And, and normally you could just monitor locally your voice once you get it sa set up and you know it's sounding good. So this is just for this video. So the USB mic comes in and here are those so we have an equalizer here so I'm taking out just a little bit at 500 Hertz we're down about 6 dB and the upper and the lower regions are coming in and you have to do this through experiment you adjust your and peak out or null out some of the frequencies in your voice to make it sound as good as possible and of course you're trying to get it in with those in between the 300 to 3k which is mostly what the radio will be sending through its transmit circuits. So then we have an audio stabilizer, an automatic gain control. So we're taking whatever is coming in and sending it out at minus 18. And this is to get the ALC on the K3S just right. So you have to adjust that experimentally and, and determine how much power you need to send into the input of that sound card the K3S sound card so that you don't peg out the ALC so once it goes through this equalizer and this AGC circuit then it goes out of this VST host to the delay line over to the Zeta that goes to the Raspberry Pi that's on the first channel that's all only audio this is the tone on the second channel I'm using so it's nice that Zeta has two channels for this purpose so let's go back to the VST host 
I have an oscillator set to about 1500 hertz and at minus 3 dB so that's just low enough to be under this slider right here on regate so here's the, the uh, tone as you see on the right here stays at about minus 3 and as soon as I talk this activates this gate the gate stays open forever for for however long you want this hold right now it's about 400 milliseconds so I and you can hear it uh, bounce back after about that long of a time again we down here down here in the high pass low pass we're going 300 to, to around 3k something like that and everything else was kind of default except for the hold and the the uh, low pass and high pass and the slider you have to adjust that so once this activate that tone by itself is enough to go through so I'm not going to talk and I'm going to lower this threshold okay so that kind of gives you an idea so that is just enough power in that M oscillator at minus 3 dB so it just waits until my voice comes in there and triggers it and this is my voice on a second loud max so I'm taking it from minus 20 and my voice is uh, automatically gained up to the output of about 0 dB and that's enough to trigger the gate right here and it seems to be working very well and because of the delay I'm not missing any of the, the beginnings of those very sharp and short uh, consonants like T, t, t or sh uh. yep yep Roger so you can hear the full R the T and the P otherwise those usually get cut off just a little bit and on the left side we have an oscilloscope on the bottom left so you can see that I'm getting full output whatever the power setting is and right now I just have it set to a, a couple of watts going into a you know a, a 50 ohm load so it's not being broadcast but I've checked the uh, watt meter and it goes up to full power once you get the proper setting for how much of your voice is needed to activate the, the ALC circuit just enough and I have about 20 percent compression I think on the uh, K3 set and it is setting as well so you have to fiddle with all that but once you get it set you're set so I've been able to remote in from this laptop using Zeta on this side Zeta on the Raspberry Pi side for the audio I'm using jack audio and jack router and so is the Pi we're using a, some free VST plugins to help with the voice and this Loudmax is is very helpful for this setup so that you can keep the volumes very steady without sounding super squished or squashed like if you just had the compression on maximum so it's not too bad it's a bit of a learning curve to get all this routing but it seems to be working pretty well and for those people that uh, want to use you know sideband or AM this will work just fine using a Raspberry Pi to interface with your rig and uh, there'll be some sh uh, notes in the uh, bottom of the video here about G rig and we can change frequency with a left click or right click here's a left click takes it up right click takes it down and you can do that on any of these digits over here you have the mode 
So there's a there's a few functions. This is very simple, but it works just fine for what I need it for. So that's the basic setup, if you can call it basic, for using a remote setup from using a Raspberry Pi hooked up to a Elecraft K3S remoting in from another location. In this particular instance, instance, I'm using Linux Mint 17 and some oh, free VST plugins using Wine on the Linux and some of uh, LV2 plugins. Thanks for watching.